In today's video, we're going to talk about tuning a simple antenna duplexer with a spectrum analyzer and tracking generator, as well as tuning it with a VNA or vector network analyzer. But first, let's talk about what a duplexer is. A duplexer is a device that permits full duplex transmit and receive through a common antenna using relatively closely spaced signals. Uh, a diplexer, on the other hand, uh, typically will separate uh, frequencies by band, maybe a VHF and UHF. But a duplexer typically works within a common band where the frequencies can be very closely spaced together. This, can be, this is often used in you know, very common applications like uh, cellular telephones and things like that, as well as uh, public service radio and amateur radio uh, repeaters. Now, Because the transmissions occur simultaneously, the duplexer must ensure that the transmit frequency doesn't get into the receiver, and then the receive signal coming in also doesn't get into the transmitter. And because these signals are very closely spaced, that places some pretty strong uh, requirements on the filter properties and the band pass and band reject characteristics of the duplexer. Now there are different types of duplexers. Uh, probably one of the simplest types is a band reject or notch type filter, where essentially the transmit frequency is notched, uh, so there's a lot of rejection in the receive path, and vice versa, the receive frequency is notched in the transmit path. So that ensures the transmit signal doesn't get into the receiver and the receive signal doesn't get into the transmitter. The problem with band reject filters is that uh, the past band characteristics are relatively broad. So if you're working in a dense environment, you might allow other signals to get uh, into the receiver that uh, might overload the receiver. So um, the band reject filter, while it's simple and it's the example that I have here that I'm going to demonstrate, it's not the most desirable, but it's certainly the easiest to tune. So that's why we, we're going to use it in this video. There's also bandpass type filters. The bandpass type actually sets a, ba a narrow bandpass filter around both the transmit and receive paths with a high rejection for out of band signals. And that's typically the preferred type. And then uh, also there are repeater or uh, duplexers that combine both of them. They're both a bandpass and band reject in the same device. And they're more complex to tune. And if I get, ever get a hold of one here to, uh, to demonstrate, I'll, I'll show tuning uh, one of those uh, combination type devices as well. But for today, we're going to just show tuning a band reject filter with both a spectrum analyzer and with a VNA or vector network analyzer. This is the duplexer we'll be using for today's video. It's a simple band reject or notch type duplexer. Uh, so we have an operating frequency pair, a high upper frequency and a lower frequency and they go through to a common antenna port. On the high side, we will pass the upper of the frequency pairs with very little attenuation and we'll notch out the low frequency of the pair and just the opposite occurs on the low side. Uh, the adjustments are done by essentially tuning each of these rectangular blocks which are kind of resonant cavity notch filters and there are little adjustment screws at the end of each of these. A duplexer like this is a passive device, so the response through a given path will be the same regardless of whether we're sending a signal in that direction or in this direction. So it almost doesn't matter really which side we hook the tracking generator up to and which side we hook the uh, spectrum analyzer up to. It is important though in many cases to ensure that you terminate the unused port when you're tuning one side. We've got the tracking generator output connected to the high path port the antenna connected to the spectrum analyzer input, and we've set up the sweep uh, to encompass the notch that should appear in that high path. Now the sticker on the unit in indicates that the low path or the low frequency should be 314.75 MHz. So I've got that set up as the center frequency of my sweep, and I'm looking at a 100 MHz span. Now what we can see on the analyzer is essentially the notch, in this case there's three little notches, because of the three cavities that are not properly tuned. Uh, and uh, right here at the center is where we actually want that uh, all these things to line up. So we'll just simply adjust each of these screws to make that happen. It doesn't really matter where you start generally. Uh, so we'll just start on the end here. and I'll start adjusting this one. And we can see that uh, the notch that's all the way over on the right is uh, moving over. So let's move that over until it kind of lines up uh, right about in the middle. And uh, we're probably right about there. Let's adjust the second one here to see if we can make any improvement in that. Let's see if I move it this way, you can see I'm kind of extending it out to the right. So let's kind of bring that back. 
Now if we go too far, we can kind of see we're extending it the wrong way. So let's try to center that back up and bring it into the center. And then we'll grab the third uh, slug here. If I get the screwdriver in there, there we go. And bring that one down. So now I can see I've kind of adjusted that uh, probably about as best as we can do. And we, we can see we're driving right down in here. Now the wide band of fuzz I see here indicates that I'm really driving down into the noise floor of the analyzer here. So let's see if we can do something about that. So right now the resolution bandwidth on the analyzer is 1 megahertz. So if we lower that, let me go uh, to a coupling menu and uncouple the resolution bandwidth and start lowering that down. If I bring that down to say you know, 30 kilohertz or even 10 kilohertz, you can actually see now that uh, I'm sweeping a whole lot slower, but I've also driven that notch a little bit deeper down. Uh, and if we actually take our span, and let's reduce that down to say 50 megahertz, so I don't have to sweep quite, quite as far. Uh, now I get a little bit faster sweep, it's still taking about a second to do the full sweep, but now I can actually see that uh, noise is being dropped down quite a bit. Compared to the passband characteristic up here, I'm down about 90 dB. Now I can see that the, the bottom of this notch isn't perfectly flat, so that tells me I probably don't have each of these cavities perfectly lined up. So if we tweak on them a little bit more, I was able to kind of make that a little bit flatter. So I'm probably a lot closer there now. Let's see with that notch right there. But I can't really do much better than that with the noise floor where I have it. Now I've wound up with a notch that is literally about 90 dB down from my passband characteristic up here. So that's actually pretty good. And, and that's probably about as deep as you're going to be able to go with most spectrum analyzers with a tracking generator. Uh, you're just not going to have enough dynamic range to see any more. Now the issue that I've got here is that I've got a relatively wide notch here and the reality is that the notch actually extends down below what I can actually see on this analyzer here. So I actually can get more rejection and actually fine-tune each of these cavities even more to line them up to deepen that notch even further which would give me more and more isolation between the transmit and receive path. But I'm typically limited when I do that with a spectrum analyzer and tracking generator. So let's take a look at how much better we can do with the VNA. On the spectrum analyzer we left it with a 50 megahertz span and a resolution bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. So I set it the same 50 megahertz uh, frequency span on the VNA and a 10 kilohertz IF bandwidth. Now it's, it might be tough for you to see, we'll zoom in on this in a moment, but uh, this lineup right up here is 0 dB, so there's my passband characteristic like we saw on the top of the uh, spectrum analyzer display. And this line right here is my 90 dB, 90 dB down. We can see we're actually uh, better than 10 dB and close to 20 dB better. But now we can actually see I do have a little, still have a little bit of width here. So we actually can make some improvements in tuning each of these cavities and lining them all up and drive that notch even deeper. Let's see if we can tweak these filters a little better and align them up and drive that notch a little bit deeper. So we uh, kind of bring these all over. Let's see, we'll leave that one about where it is so we can drive some of these other ones a little bit closer to it. And bring that one down here even more. All right, I tweaked these around a little bit, and it's probably about as close as I'm going to get. If we take a look now, uh, we're kind of hitting the noise floor, or getting closer to the noise floor of the VNA here. And I'm looking at, uh, oh, in the neighborhood of about 110 dB down. So I've just gained myself another 20 dB in terms of improving that measured notch that we were seeing compared to the spectrum analyzer. I oh, made one small change here. I reduced the IF bandwidth down to one kilohertz. Uh, the sweep speed's gotten slower, but now I can actually see that notch is actually closer to about 120 dB. And uh, I, I see it's coming down pretty much to a point, so I, which means I've got each of those cavities pretty much lined on top of each other. Probably not going to do a whole lot better than that, but 120 dB of uh, notch, you know, of rejection versus, you know, the only thing we could really see on the spectrum analyzer is about 90. So that's that's a 30 dB difference, a factor of a thousand now, in terms of uh, the difference that we see uh, in the rejection of one signal through one path or the other. Now, of course, a, a VNA brings a lot more to the party than just improved dynamic range. In this particular case, for a notch type uh, duplexer. You know, the dynamic range uh, improvement does really uh, what we gain. 
when we start getting into the more complex uh, types of types of duplexers, such as uh, you know the bandpass type or those that include both bandpass and band reject in the same cavity, there's a lot more adjustments to make. And you may want to look at more than just in this case, like an S21 or a through measurement. You may also want to be looking at you know S11 or return loss uh, for a given path, or maybe uh, uh, both directions simultaneously because a lot of these other more complex uh, duplexers will include adjustments not only for the pan pass characteristic but for the notch characteristic and even for the insertion loss which will also adjust the cue of you know say the band pass side or something like that so by being able to look at uh, both uh, reflection and transmission properties at the same time uh, with a VNA can be a lot more insightful and make it easier to tune these more complex duplexer types I hope this video has given you a bit of insight into what a duplexer is and how you tune it with a spectrum analyzer and tracking generator as well as with a VNA. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up on the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.